My name is Bill Morris. I'm CEO of Blue Star Recyclers. My name is Andy O'Leary. I'm uh, Vice President at Blue Star Recyclers. My primary position is to um, manage all, all of our material processing, so making sure that it's separate in a safe manner and making sure that uh, we vet anybody that we're sending it to for processing. We're one of the industries in the United States that has no regulation. Uh, there is some registration required at the state level. We're a, uh, uh, a registered hand large handler of universal waste, which is what electronics is, uh, falls under. Uh, it's a solid waste category. So in the absence of regulation, the temptation is to steal the things that have value, um, maximize your profit, and to dump or export the things that don't have value. Having an understanding of um, kind of what those different components are, what does have a negative value versus what has um, a positive value, uh, we can make a, a pretty quick assumption about what our downstream processor is gonna be doing with that material. If we were starting this business with the wrong motive, uh, we could make a lot of money if our, if our interest was to uh, scour and scavenge commodities out of the electronics and then just simply dump the rest either in landfills or send it abroad. It's literally on the recycler to show due diligence in making sure that they're vetting their, their processor. Um, it's not enough just to not ask questions. Um, you have to literally take the extra step of um, kind of going out, visiting that recycler, finding out exactly what their downstream is going to be and make sure that um, you have 100% certainty of what's going to happen to that material once it leaves your doors. There is no formula that supports ethical processing of electronics that's free. Because there is a cost to ethically process some materials, someone has to pick up that tab. Now, we have events twice a year that are subsidized by either manufacturers or by national processors getting subsidies from manufacturers. Um, so we can offer that, but it, without that subsidy, a free recycling event or a recycler who's taking material for free has to be scavenging the commodity materials that have value and throwing away the rest that doesn't have value. And that's what creates the environmental damage. If you YouTube, you know, gold from circuit boards, you'll get, you know, dozens of videos of these backyard smelters trying to get gold out. Uh, the only way that you can make money at this is to be damaging the environment and damaging the people that are doing that, that processing. Early on, uh, probably in our first year of operation, uh, we had a group of commodity scavengers coming by with a pretty large wad of, of $100 bills and they were looking to purchase our, our highest grade materials which are our processor chips, our memory chips and, and then our high grade circuit boards and we were really in a cash crunch at that time and, and I wasn't all that aware of, of um, some of the uh, negative outcomes from selling that material to those folks and so my initial thought was, well, we need the, the money and we needed it bad to cover payroll. So uh, I told them to come back and make us an offer. And the principle is the, is the same. We have to ask questions. We have to know, okay, if you're paying me for that unit, how are you paying your costs? And uh, the most likely answer is going to be um, some kind of dumping. And after talking to our materials processing director, he reminded me that these folks didn't have the certification to process the material uh, ethically and that environmentally it would uh, cause damage if we sold the material to the wrong people. There's a lot of opportunities that are most likely on the up and up, but uh, we just, uh, because we can't show uh, exactly uh, what's going to happen when it leaves our doors, we have to walk away from it. We didn't start life to make a profit. It was easier for us to say we have to be as squeaky ethically as we do socially. We, you know, if our mission is going to help 
uh, create jobs for adults with disabilities, then we have to have a, a be, uh, an environmental approach that's beyond reproach. If we take a shortcut, if we just um, don't ask the questions, if we look the other way, um, we're jeopardizing our social mission. That can come back and, and jeopardize the jobs for our guys. So that's the, that's the lens that I use. If you look at what's harmed, uh, produced the most harm in, in uh, our industry with recyclers, when they make one bad decision and that uh, event gets covered by the media or they get caught for it, it makes it very difficult for the public to trust that recycler ever again. So uh, we have to be hyper vigilant not to make one bad move or, or sell even a small amount of material to the wrong place because if it ends up being found that it was dumped abroad or something, then, then the public just can't trust us anymore. When you're looking at a warehouse full of TVs and monitors, uh, knowing that it's a liability that we're going to have to pay to get those um, plausas, it's difficult when you get those calls saying, hey, I'll pay a dollar a TV. Um, you know, that would be a very easy solution for us um, financially. Um, but long term, that's not going to help us. Uh, that's not going to make us sustainable because, you know, ultimately the public is going to catch up. Uh, they're going to become uh, more cognizant of some of the, the um, poor practices in this industry. And uh, it's literally a line in the sand. And we have to make sure that uh, we're with it, the good guys. <laughs>